it's Jazz at Red Panda Reads and today I'm doing another board game recommendation video and this week I am talking about the perfect games to play outdoors. I am now going to be doing monthly board game recommendation videos so subscribe and hit that like button if you want to see more of this. So I live in the UK and you can now meet with up to six people outside which is amazing and six is such a fabulous number for playing games with. Board games are also pretty good because I don't know about you but I have completely forgotten how to socialise with people when there isn't a screen between them and me and therefore when conversation gets awkward you can just be like, games? Um, so I wanted to put together a list of games that I think are really good to play outside because obviously there's a number of games which it's just not doable. As soon as there's a little bit of wind all the cards just get, you know, fly away and it's just not fun. So I went hunting for board games which were good with groups, assuming we can meet up to six people outside, and also weren't too dependent on the weather. So we're talking tiles, we're talking minimum cards, we're talking you hold onto your cards for dear life when the hurricane comes kind of game. Um, so I hope you enjoy my recommendations and let me know your recommendations as well for games that you could play outside. And the first game I want to talk about is Camel Up. So Camel Up is a fabulous betting game where you are all at the races betting on which camel is going to win the race and during this game you have to bluff, you have to make the decisions of when you should bet on certain things and as you're doing this you're moving the camels around the board and yeah it's just great and the only cards you have are those that you bet and the rest are either tiles or really cute little wooden animal blocks. So absolutely fabulous game, really fun. You could also make a whole night of it, like just do a whole night of betting on camels and I think it could be an absolutely fun evening with your friends. The next board game I will mention is Carcassonne. So Carcassonne is one of those board games which I think is great for the non-board gamer. So it's a really good, I guess, gateway board game. And um, if you don't know, Carcassonne is a tile placing game where you place tiles on the ground or wherever you are playing and you join them up and you score points for completing castles, you score points for completing roads, you get points depending where you put your little man in the field and it's a very light strategy fun game but you can play this game even when it's a little bit windy. I mean, look at these fabulous tiles. They're not gonna move unless, you know, the wind really picks up. And I have played this game in so many different places outside and also with people who don't normally necessarily love board games and they have enjoyed it. I mean, my dad is now converted, which I think is a positive. So really, really good outdoor introduction board game. Also, if you want to make things a little bit more frustrating and competitive with Carcassonne, get the Princess and the Dragon expansion. Because normally in Carcassonne, your men stay on the board until you decide to take them off and you score points. In this, no, the dragon comes flying and it takes your pieces and it's so infuriating because you've almost finished a castle which is going to score you so many points and then the dragon eats you and someone else goes on it and scores you points. Yes, yes, I have, I have gone through this. I think I need to talk to someone about it and it is very frustrating. The next game I want to talk about is another one that I don't have a copy of and I want to say I'm pronouncing it right. It is Flam Rouge, which is a, another kind of betting game. You are little people cycling around a cycling track and you basically have different cards in your hand which have movement speeds and you have to decide how far you want to go each go and you don't know how far other people are going to go and if you think about like the physics of cycling, if you're at the front, you're going to get resistance. So you then get a worse card put in your pack of cards. If you're at the back, um, only by one, you can get in someone's draft and zoom up behind them. And so it's kind of got those physics of cycling and you have to kind of anticipate what the rest of the cycling pack is going to do in the race. If you go uphill, there's certain limitations to how fast you go. And similarly, if you go downhill, there is a minimum speed at which you will fly down the hill. The really nice thing about this game as well is you can work 
in teams. So you can have, for example, up to four teams of two who have to work together to basically make sure their team members stay together and support each other to try and win the cycling race. And you do have cards in this game, but most of them are your own cards that you need to hold. And therefore, again, wind is not too much of a problem from my personal experience. So the next game I want to mention is Labyrinth. So I have the Star Wars version of Labyrinth, but this game was actually a game I first played when I was young and I was obsessed with it. So I think it's really good for a whole range of age groups. I still really enjoy it. And the purpose of this game is you are little, you are little men flying around this Star Wars galaxy trying to find certain tokens. And so you take one piece of the board and slide it in and the whole rest of the board moves and it's just a really fun game of manipulating mazes and as you can see lovely sturdy boards oh and all these pieces are just beautifully slipped onto them so again fabulous game for outdoors and just fun fun for all ages that was the board again no one's gonna believe me are they so the next game I want to talk about is Perudo, which is a dice bluffing game, which is absolutely fabulous for taking around because literally all you need is a cup and five six sided dice. Everyone who you're meeting outside could bring their own as well, which is great if we're thinking, you know, hot hand hygiene and all that stuff with the horrible stuff that's going on with the world. You take turns betting how many numbers of dice there are hidden underneath everyone's cups and if someone calls you out with your bet and you are wrong you lose a dice so slowly everyone loses a dice until the final person wins who has a dice left and it's just a really good fun game who you can play with lots of people and dice cup like you could play this game in the pouring rain and you'd love it basically so it's great the Next one I should mention is Throw Throw Burrito and the reason I think this is an outdoor game is that inside it is slightly hazardous and when I'm talking hazardous I'm talking breaking, I'm talking injuries, you want to play this game on the grass so you can throw these things, these, bur these burritos at people without hurting or breaking anything. Um, there are quite a lot of cards in this game which goes against my minimum card rule but I think this game is supposed to be really chaotic so a little bit of wind I think would just add to the confusion and the fun of it oh yeah great I don't know why I did that so now this is a mess as I said chaotic fun um if you played it in the wind or the rain let me know if I'm just talking rubbish and it actually is awful but I think it would be great fun and also on grass not concrete I think concrete would be really problematic. I haven't explained what this game is about. Um, it's basically a party game where you all have cards and you pick up and turn over cards and you're trying to get matching pairs. And if you get certain matching pairs, you have to do different style fights for the burrito. So we're talking kind of like one-to-one -one standoffs with the burritos. We're talking multiple people running to get the burritos. It's pretty full on. And you also don't only need to get the burrito, but you have to get the burrito and throw it at people. Yeah, it's great. So the last game I want to talk about, which I think is really fabulous as an outdoor game, is D&D. &D. So I am a massive D&D &D fan. I love it. It has keep, kept me sane during lockdown. And I think as long as you don't feel embarrassed by acting like, I don't know, a dragon in the middle of a field where people might say, why the heck are you roaring? I think it is a perfect game to play. You can all have your notebooks uh, where you have your character sheets and then you have your DM who's leading it and then you can have your little dice bowls. And I just think it would be wonderful outside. And especially because most of D&D in my experience is your travelers in the wild walking. So imagine walking up, I don't know, to a beautiful mountain or hill, cause I'm in the UK somewhere, getting to the top, pulling out your D&D stuff and playing a game in the wildness. It would just be fantastic. 
So D&D is a role playing game where you basically determine a story via the role of a dice and your character has different abilities, whether that's magic or the ability to um, fight really well with a sword and you basically explore the world that the dungeon master creates for you. And I get really attached to my characters and the party I'm playing with at the moment, there is so much emotion and history and story between them as well. So it's a combination of fighting bad guys and monsters and sometimes a little drama, kind of, it's, it's just a fantastic way to escape from the madness of the world. Um, so these are just some of the gorgeous D&D books I own. And if you're not a fan of like the fantasy style of things and are, let's say, a Star Wars fan, there are other role playing games as well. So the great thing about Force and Destiny compared to, for example, D&D is it's a lot more role playing focused and the dice aren't simply succeeds or fails. They're more complicated than that and more straight story driven. So that's really fantastic. If you'd like me to do a video on different role playing games, I would be super keen to do that. And also just let me know what you want from my like board game videos. I'm supposed to be a book channel and my last board game video did far better than any of my book videos have ever done. So maybe I'm in the wrong industry, but I don't know how many board games I have <laughs> to keep this going and for how long, but I'm going to try and get monthly videos out because I've been playing board games since I was really, really young and I love it and it's a passion of mine. So I might as well share it with you guys and get your recommendations in return. Stay safe, everyone. Lovely to see you and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye bye.